Hey again guys and welcome back. My charging a drill battery without a drill battery charger video has gone gangbusters and with that came a lot of negative comments and I figured um, some of them are accurate. Yeah this could be unsafe and that's why I said you know be careful and don't do it unattended but others are I believe just wrong. So a few of you guys said that these connectors in here are for balance charging and I'm not buying it. So I figured we would open this up and see what's inside. I've taken the screws out. Uh, it was a pain in the butt because they're Torx and they're self-tapping. But this should just lift off now. Yeah. Oh, got a little spring of a thing there. That's pretty cool. Got a little uh, daughter board here. So this will be our like protection circuit, I assume, or BMS or whatever the heck it is on this specific model, like that. This here is a little board with our charge indicator. Let's see, so it work? Yeah, there we go. You can see that. Okay, and then, oh, this is lifting up. Oh. Okay, it's, uh, it's actually using a strap right from here. Looks like it's coming down this way and up to soldered right here. So this is soldered. Let's see if we can get the, the cells out. I'm gonna be careful with this. Obviously, you wanna be careful with the cells, but I don't think you'll be able to puncture them because they are um, metal body. That's the, the benefit of lithium ion versus lithium polymer. There we go. That was pretty easy. We got the cells out. Right off the bat, I can see that um, these are not balance charged in any way. Not not at all. And the reason, oh, unless there's some connections underneath here. Whoop. Nope, see I can lift this up. See, there are no other connections on this pack aside from the very positive here to the B plus and the negative here to the B minus. So no matter what, you cannot balance lithium ion cells without a connection to the positives of each bank. So just stop it right now. These things are not balanced from the factory. Maybe the original um, Makita one is. This one is not. So to protect these cells, there's a few protections in place. So one of them is this one here. This is a temperature sensor. So 100 degrees C. Actually, I think that's a thermal fuse at 100 degrees C. I could be wrong. I haven't looked up anything. I just opened this pack. Um, but it goes, it goes between here and here, and that's what this terminal is for. So this terminal is basically between, it looks like B+, plus. I can't get this up and off there, but it looks like it goes between B+, plus and this terminal. So this terminal here is to, um, is to check the temperature of the pack, but I think it's a thermal fuse. I think it's probably the charger goes through here and if it gets too hot it, it opens. So that's that. What about, oh there's another protection here. There's a little, I don't know if you can see that, there's a little black bulb right at the end there. Let me get you a close up. Can you see that little black bulb right there? This guy here. Yeah, it might be difficult to see. That guy. Well, that thing is dropped right through this hole here. See that hole there? Oh, oh boy. Okay, that's okay. I just unsecured one of the connections. So it's dropped through this hole here, and it's also checking the temperature of the cells, so just this one here. So that's another protection that's in place on this pack, but it is not balanced. Let me see if I can sort of get this board up and out of the way so we can take a look at what's on it. I'm actually going to have to try to desolder 
the board from the top but I do want to mention there is one sense wire which is taking the pack negative here so this is B minus over here so that's this wire going right here to this tab it's checking between the pack negative and the last cell so it's actually checking the voltage of only one cell and I presume that when this battery goes low uh, it'll refuse to charge there are also some um, resistors on here which are probably dividing up the voltage and allowing the PCM or the whatever the control module the micro on here to um, stop to disallow charge if um, the pack voltage is too low and that's where you'll see a lot of power tools on the side of the road is because you put the the battery in the charger and the charger just blinks red or whatever doesn't want to charge it that's why because they really don't want you uh, charging up um, a, a pack that's too low and the calculation is probably something around like three volts per cell uh, we got five cells here so anywhere below 15 volts the the charger will probably refuse it so I'm gonna try to desolder this I'm gonna zoom you in a little bit closer and we'll see if I can pull this board up so we can take a better look at it success it's off I'm not sure if I'll be able to get it back on but whatever that's the risk I take for you guys so this is it this is the underside of the circuit board all we have is a micro and a couple little passives and maybe one transistory type thing it does seem like the um, the cell here is being used possibly to just power the micro but I think it's able to read it somehow so it is checking one cell but again not through the this multi connector here and in fact this multi connector I would have to see on a legit uh, Makita drill battery but they don't seem to be connected to anything here and they just seem to be connected to um, a network of resistors on the other side and I think all they're doing is giving an ID to the charger so when you plug it into the charger the charger reads the resistance between a certain number of these pins and determines what kind of battery this is supposed to charge at. Don't forget, a lot of those Makita 18 volt chargers are dual chargers. They charge 12 and 18 volt Makita batteries. So yeah, uh, this one here is definitely a thermal fuse. I just looked it up, so it has 100 degrees C. But what I did is I checked resistance between um, the B plus and that weird uh, third connector thing. And it was uh, zero ohms resistance. So this is basically just like a, a piece of wire. So there's nothing in there. So when it's stuffed in the pack here, if it gets to 100 degrees C, it will turn off your power drill or it'll turn off the charger. Either way, it'll remove the, the, the voltage from the current path um, between the, uh, the B plus and the weird pin. So that means it only uses that if it goes through the weird pin. Now this one here, this little bulb I was showing you guys earlier, that one measured uh, 18k ohms of resistance and when I heated it up between my fingers for a few seconds it went down to 16k uh, ohms so that must be reading, being read by the micro. It's just taking the temperature of this one cell here, the cell number 2 in the pack and so uh, it's just checking uh, and seeing what the temperatures are at. However it doesn't seem to communicate anywhere on here like all these pins here there's no I mean it's hard to see through the silk screen obviously but it doesn't seem to be connected to anything here so unless there's some vias I can't see then maybe that's what's going on here but yeah these are the sort of resistors see that network there's a couple little transistors they seem to be switching between these banks of resistors but it's definitely not uh, to balance the cells because there's only one cell that's tapped. The rest is literally pack, uh, pack negative and pack positive. That's entirely it. So I want to try to resolder this. It might take me a few attempts 
And then the last thing I want to do is check these cells. I'm probably going to cut the cardboard off one or two of them just to see what kind of cells these are because this pack claims to be a 6 amp hour um, 18 volt lithium ion pack and if each of these cells are 3000 milliamp hours then that's what it is but if not they lied Now that that is done and the pack is back together, um, I'm just going to try to slit some of these and hopefully they're rotated in such a way that we can see what the rating is on the wrapper. I'm not too concerned about this going back in the wrapper because I'm just going to tape it up after. Um, I am concerned about breaking through the wrapper because it's a heat trunk. So let's see. The, the letters I can see here, I don't know if you guys can see it, but RHY062-1SHLD. Not quite what I was looking for. I don't think that's the entirely the, uh, the model number or anything. Let's see. Just taking my time here. Trying not to go too far. This cardboard is actually not very thick. There we go. This is what I need. Um, 186520R. So RHY0621 SHLD 186520R. So let me look that up in the gargler. No go on my research. Uh, I did find that RHY uh, Batteries is a company that makes these things. Um, but they say on their website that they're using Sanyo or LG um, cells. I'm not buying it. Uh, I'm, I mean, I've looked at them. They're not these. These are in a custom wrapper, however, because they have the RHY company's uh, name on it. So maybe, maybe they are. But at the moment, I'm doubting it. So basically, I'm going to put this back together, and next time we take a look at these batteries, it's going to be a capacity test, but only if you guys really want to see it. So let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one.